Hello, and welcome back to the Dragonfly Daily. I am Mike, the product manager at ORS, the product manager of Dragonfly. You can follow me at Dragonfly Wizard on Twitter. Welcome back to another episode of the Daily. If you want to connect with me, you can find me on LinkedIn or you can find me on ResearchGate. But please visit our YouTube channel where you'll find this and other content on how to use Dragonfly, and you'll learn some things about scientific image processing. We are in the middle of the Dragonfly Daily series. We are now on Lesson 24. Uh, Dragonfly Organizer. Uh, let's just pretend that says Dragonfly Organizer. Um, as always, if you're watching YouTube, hit the subscribe button. We want to see lots of subscriptions so we have a lot of people engaged and collecting notifications. And when there's new content, not just for the Dragonfly Daily, but any videos that we post to YouTube that have importance and value for the Dragonfly user community. So thanks again for watching. Uh, the topics we've covered so far have spanned many categories. The basics of Dragonfly, image segmentation, image processing, a little bit on presenting your data. We will venture into application areas. We'll venture into batch processing with macros and automated computing. We'll also look at some customization with Python. We'll also continue to cover quantitative analysis. So all the topics you see in black are the lessons we've already covered with the lesson number and in blue are lessons still to come. So we will be covering more content in the Dragonfly Daily series. Today's lesson, lesson 24, Dragonfly Organizer. This is a tool for organizing your Dragonfly data processing so that you can find data you've been working with and find results you've been working with more easily. We will be using Dragonfly 4.1. Um, the basically out of the box experience, just maybe a few customizations that I made in customizing Dragonfly Lesson 6. So the Dragonfly Project Organizer is a way to store and organize your data. There is a specific license extension required to have the organizer, but that license is included with our non-commercial licenses. If you are using a general purpose license that you purchased either from ORS or a Dragonfly Pro license you purchased from the Zeiss sales channel, you will need to purchase the extension for the Project Organizer. If you're interested in trying it, you can always get a trial license from us. So this allows you to group related data and process data so that it's easy to find and organize the work you are carrying out. You're able to use folders on one or more hard drives to organize the data. You'll see what I mean. You can also access projects on remote servers. And if you have projects on your system and your colleagues have projects on their system, it's easy to migrate projects from one user to another by drag and drop and rebuild. We'll see what I mean. You can also add screenshots directly to your project, but you can also add non-Dragonfly data such as PDFs or README text files, etc. So let's pop over to Dragonfly so we can see what I mean. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open the organizer, show you what it's about, and then I'm going to open up some Dragonfly data and start building some projects. I'm going to go to File, Open the Organizer. Now, I happen to be using a Windows 10 Home Edition uh, recent mm, operating system installation. There are some cases where you might not get the, exactly the same behavior and you may have to turn on some features for support. If you have any issues with the organizer, you can email support at theobjects.com. But in my case, I have a brand new system and this worked just fine just opening the organizer. Now, what we're looking at here is a view of the organizer and this is a place that organizes all of our projects. Now, I don't have any projects yet and for that matter, I cannot create a project until I create a project root. So there is a spot for manage roots. So we will start there. Now, what we need to do is we would normally click on add root. And so for example, here is my C drive. Let's suppose I'm going to store all of my data and all of my Dragonfly work in a folder right here. I'm gonna click new folder and I'm gonna call this Mike's Dragonfly work and hit enter and I'm gonna select that folder. That is now my project root. Now, you may have multiple hard drives. You may have a local hard drive and a network hard drive, or you may have hard drives, uh, multiple hard drives in your system. I sometimes work on a system that has a, a fast hard drive and a super fast hard drive. So you might want to have multiple project routes and you may want to store some projects that you're working on at any given time on your super fast hard drive. So you have a lot of flexibility in having multiple routes. But for the simple case, let's work with a single project root. This is going to be a place to store projects. Now that I have a project, I could uh, create a, I'm sorry, now that I have a project root, I could create a project, but actually I'm going to go to manage settings first. There is a database that stores all of the information associated with your projects, and it can be stored in an all users folder or the current user folder or a specific location. That's what you see at the top. 
Now, suppose you are working in a work environment and you want to, let us say, regularize your data so that you have common tags associated with your data. So suppose every time I create a project, I want to know, let's see, double click. Oh, wait, mm, I thought I could just, mm, I, well, let's see, I can remove, I can add, uh, make it mandatory. I thought I could double click and change the name here. Maybe I'll have to look at that later. The idea you can do is you can enforce certain tags. So suppose every time I create a project, I want to have a tag telling me what microscope it was collected on or what microscopist collected it or the curator of the particular data. You can add new tags and enforce them. And that's what happens here in project tags. But you'll also see that you have limitless um, unenforceable tags. You can have as many tags on a project as you want. All this will become clear in a few minutes. Now on the bottom you see server. If you want your project root to be accessible to others, if you work in a team environment and you want other people to be able to view and download data from your projects, they will not, they will not be able to overwrite or change data, but if you want them to be able to download data, you could enable sharing and then you could authenticate access with a particular password. Then anyone with your server address could access your data as well. If you want to do that, you will need to start the organizer automatically because you will not normally have access to this when Dragonfly is closed unless the organizer is running in the background. Okay, this is what we see on the organizer settings page. Now, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a project. Um, the first project I'm going to create is going to be a project for the FibSim data set that we downloaded from the Digital Rocks portal. So I'm going to click create a project and I'm going to name this project make uh, Veca Muerta Shale. And I have to choose a root where to store the project, but of course here I only have one root, Mike's Dragonfly Work. At this point I could add tags. Whoops, let's correct the name Shale. I could add tags. So I know this is FibSim I know it is collected on a Zeiss or Riga, and maybe I want to uh, associate this with digital rocks because I want to be able to search for digital rocks projects later, or maybe I just want to associate it with geological samples. So let's, uh, let's keep those tags for now and click OK. What I have is I have a current view of this project, the Veca Muerta Shale. Now I'm going to import data the way I normally would. I'm going to go to import image files and add. And here is some Dragonfly daily data I have used in the past. Here's the Veca Muerta Shale sample. I'm going to double click and click next. Now I do know that this data is 0. Point, well, it's, it's 2.5 nanometers in X and Y and 5 nanometers in Z and I'll click finish and import the data. Now, after those data are imported, I may change the file name or some other properties like that. So I, I should say, uh, I say file name, but let's say uh, the title is really what this is called. So I'll just put Veca Muerta Shale, and this comes from Matt Andrew at Zeiss. And uh, in fact, that's a good tag over here. Maybe later I want to search for Matt Andrew data. And so I'll add that as a tag. Now, what we're looking at now is a view of this project, but I haven't put any data in it. If I want this data in it, I can just drag and drop. And now that data set will be encoded in this particular project. So um, why don't I see it? Uh, I don't know why I didn't see it initially. Um, but it is there. Let's do a double check. Let's see if I delete this from my workspace and double click here. Should load my project. Okay. And don't know why it's showing up. Let's see if I can rename it the Veca Marta Shale. And now let's go ahead and import an image segmentation. So if I import image files, and I add the segmented. This is also available on the Digital Rocks portal. It has a slightly different pixel size. It's labeled as five by five by five nanometers. And we'll hit finish and we'll load that in. Now this segmentation is encoded as a 
uh, image of as a grayscale image. Now I could right click and ask Dragonfly to create a gray level multi Roy or extract Roy's. So if I extract Roy's, it will extract out one ROI for each of these phases. So we'll let that extraction take place and then we'll add those ROIs directly to our project. So we'll give that a moment. All right, now let me hide this for a moment. Uh, let's hide the source data. And what we have here in green are the pores. And what we have here in magenta are the organic matter. And uh, here we have the pyrite. And here we have the calcite. And here we have the quartz. Now, if you don't like these colors, you could change the colors, but I will select them all and I will put them in my organizer. So let's drag all these over here. And now I have all of those uh, stored in my organizer. Now, if I uh, later choose to clear all my data in my workspace or I'm opening up Dragonfly for the first time, I can always come over here and access any of these and I can just drag them into my workspace if I want, or I can uh, double click to load them. This allows you to associate any of these results. So you can perform your segmentations and make your multi roys and your graphs. And then later, rather than storing them all in one ORS object file so that you have to restore everything at once, you can store the individual objects and then you can recall the individual objects. Now let's dig a little deeper. If we visit the Digital Rocks portal and we browse published projects and we do a search for uh, Veka, then we'll see this project and we'll see that there is a publication. So I might download this paper and let's save this paper as uh, organic hosted porosity Matt Andrew. And now we have the paper saved. Now we might want to associate that paper with the project. So what I'll do is I'll open up my file browser. We'll go to downloads and we'll go to uh, so I'm just going to right click on uh, and hit copy and then I'm going to go to C drive and visit my dragonfly work project Vega Morta shale I can just right click and paste this right here now that means it is now associated but you could also do a drag and drop you could actually let's try it that way instead so what I'll do is I'll uh, come over here and I'll uh, delete this and instead we'll go to the folder where we downloaded it and we'll just uh, drop it and now what you see is under objects I have Vega Marta Shale and Pyrite and Calcite and Quartz under other I have the organic hosted porosity that means anytime I'm looking at this project if I go to other I can just double click on this and it will load it in my PDF viewer so if you have other data objects that are associated with other programs other than Dragonfly, you can open them that way. Now, what we're looking at at this point is just a single project. Let's create a second project, and I'm going to call this a dry sand pack. And you'll see why uh, after I create the project. One of the data sets I loaded comes from the Digital Rocks portal. And let's see if we can find it. All right, I always have trouble finding some things here. So we'll scroll down, see if we can find it interactively by browsing. Looks a little bit like that, but that's not it. Scrolling, scrolling, here we are. So it's a Zulema Carpen project from Penn State and um, Digital Rocks Portal is not loading. I've clicked this button a couple of times. So it seems to have stalled out, but it's in this project and it's a data set that we've downloaded. Uh, here it is. Let's get rid of this. It's blocking my captions. Okay, so we have this and then uh, one of these data sets is the uh, dry, you know, I don't know if it's that's the right one or not. Um, do a quick look. Uh, I apologize. It, the data that we're looking at is not uh, Zulema Carpens. It's actually uh, uh, Shang Yu Chen's from the University of Texas, and it's this data set right here. So I'm just going to copy this so I have that name accessible. Now I'm going to come over here 
and I'm going to look in my Dragonfly data folder and dry sand pack is right here. So we have multiple objects that we worked on with the dry sand pack. I've got the image data, I've created a cylinder, a cylinder ROI, labeled grains, labeled grains, mass, whatever all that is. So I could take all of this and I could drag it over here and put it, and now whenever I need to access these, I can access them uh, directly inside my project organizer. And so I could paste uh, Xiang Yu Chen's name and I could put University uh, of Texas and I could put uh, micro CT sand grains and now I have that associated with this project. Now what you can do is at any time you can search your project's listing and you'll get this capability. You can search by text in the tags, you can search by projects that have multi roys or meshes or you can search for projects that were created or modified. Now if I just put nothing in the search box and I hit search then I'll see both projects. I'll see the dry sand pack and I'll see the Vega Marta shale. So you can uh, browse through the different projects this way or I could search for uh, digital. So didn't I call one digital rocks portal and then Vega Marta shale shows up. Now this is only searching my local server, so it's searching all of the project routes on my local system. If I want to add remote servers, I can add the server by giving the, that computer's address and the port, and I can also give a description of it, so it'll, the description will be here. Then you'll see a list of servers, so that whenever you do a search, it'll search your local server, and then whatever remote servers you have checked. So this is a collaborative environment where you can organize your data and your data processing, but you can also access data shared from others. Now I did mention, I think, that you can put screenshots in here, so I think that means if I just have my, my current project view open and I just drag a screenshot over here, I get to name the screenshot, so I could just call this XY view of sand pack, and now it appears in the screenshots dialog. So we've got the ORS objects and we have the screenshots. If I want to save any session files directly in here, um, you can put session files and then you have your other files. All right. Um, you can also delete projects, rename projects, and I think that is about it. Let's look at the uh, agenda for today. Okay, I did mention that you can migrate projects from one user to another by drag and drop and rebuild. Now, let me cover that very, very briefly. If I were looking at my folders on my system, so uh, let's see if I can get Windows to show me my folder. So I have a Dragonfly root right here. Now I could take any of these projects and I could drag it over to another project root or I could put it on a thumb drive, hand it to you. You could drag it to your project root. After it's there, it all of the database, all of the search tags are there. You do just, after doing that, you just need to click uh, rebuild. So if we go to manage settings, you can click rebuild database after you've done that drag and drop. It'll rebuild the database and that way future searches will pull it up and you'll be able to find that project. So that is it for what I was planning to present today. I am going to move on to questions and answers, but in short, this is a way of organizing what you're working on so that you can find it easily. It is a universal problem everywhere I go. People say, oh, Mike, I have a question for you. Let me show you this image that has an anomaly. And then they spend 10 minutes saying, oh, it's not in this folder. Maybe it's in another folder. So if you organize your data and you put tags on them, then you can find them. You can always add and remove tags. Maybe I should say something about that. You can always add tags at any time and say, oh, this is also digital rocks. Uh, so we'll call this digital rocks. And maybe it's unconsolidated. So you could add whatever descriptions you want. And uh, you can also add descriptions to specific objects, like you could call this a cylinder mask. Uh, maybe I'll spell cylinder correctly, cylinder mask. So you can tag the project, but you can also tag the individual objects. All right, uh, let's move over to questions and answers. Let's pull up Q&A and see what we have. All right. 
Please explain again the reason why keep same geometry when imposing additional files doesn't always work. If the pixel dimensions are automatically picked up by Dragonfly, there wouldn't be a need for that checkbox. Well, that's not actually true. Um, is it? Let me see. Uh, ah, the What we do with keep same geometry is if you are importing, let's say we have that dual energy data set, which is two CT scans of core samples. And let's suppose each one is a lattice of 512 by 512 by 800. If I import the first data set and I specifically crop out um, 512 by 512, but instead of picking up slices 1 through 800, I pick up slices 103 through 407. If you click keep same geometry, then when you go to the next data set, it will pick up the same crop parameters on the lattice. So it is enforcing that even if the pixel size is not properly decoded. So it was a choice that we will trust the pixel size until the user specifically overrides it, but keep same geometry will save you from having to write down those lattice parameters between importing data sets. Okay, the next question. To do extract ROIs, how must the segmented data set be encoded? For instance, a binary image from Fiji Image Day will be understood as composed of two ROIs. Yes, I believe that's right. I think if you have a binary image, which you might choose to encode as zero for unlabeled pixels and one for labeled pixels, or maybe 255 for labeled pixels, both of those are more or less established conventions, then in either case, Dragonfly will recognize that you have pixels encoded at zero and you have pixels encoded at 255, but you don't have any pixels encoded at any other value. So it will extract exactly two ROIs, not 255 or 256 ROIs. If you have that binary encoding and you don't want the first ROI, that is all the unlabeled pixels, then you would just delete it and save only the binary encoding with the foreground. All right, the next question. Um, updated to today's class, did you show how to use shapes and extract structured grid to correct data set alignment in XYZ. So, oh, not updated to today's class, unrelated to today's class. Well, there was a, during the image processing week, so this may have been week three, this probably would have been around a lesson, lesson 13 or so, we had a 3D registration data set or 3D, less, 3D registration lesson. And we did mention that you can use an ROI to restrict the data set registration. I don't think you can use a shape. Maybe you can use, yes, yes, I think you can use a box. You can use either a box or an ROI. Well, I'd have to look into it, but it's covered in that video. All right, next question. How do you save the data from each project or session? So you wanna save everything from that session. Um, so you, when you save a session, it saves everything as a session file. It's not as flexible as saving the individual objects. And when you recall, you have to recall the whole session. So let's see. I remember this. I know I remember it. I don't remember. There was an option. So we normally do save session with save session. Ah, if instead you choose save session to organizer, um, then it will create a session right here. So suppose I'm working in this session and I'm looking at this and I have my cylinder turned on and I have this turned on and I'm at this slice and I wanna come right back to all of this. Then you could save session to organizer and it'll put a session here. And then when you double click this, it'll restore everything. This is a bit heavy and it's a bit redundant. So all of these objects are now also encoded in this session. So saving sessions might not be the most disk efficient way of saving work. I would encourage you to save the individual objects. Okay, let's go back to our questions and answers. Let's see what's next. Um, question, when you add an article such as a PDF to your organizer, is it a link or the actual file? If the former, if the original file was moved, won't the link be broken? Um, it is the actual file. So I'm dragging the file into my, my folder. So the idea is everything related to that project that you wanna access is in that folder. Now, if later you drag that folder and give it to someone else, then you're giving them all of the data and all of the 
associated files with it. So it's all encapsulated in that one folder. So the Dragonfly Organizer is all about encapsulating your work, your input data, your results, your associated PDFs, all in one folder. There is no nesting of folders. This is not a hierarchical, uh, extensive database. So you would not have a Dragonfly project for bones and then have sub-projects for all of the tibias you examined and then have a subfolder for all of the femurs you examined. No, each project is a top-level root project. I shouldn't use the word root, but each project has, uh, has peers and there's no hierarchical organization. So I'll just add that since I didn't mention that during today's discussion. Okay, uh, there is another question. When you reload an image, ROI, etc., from the organizer, where does Dragonfly go to find those files? Would it cause a problem if you move those files around in the Explorer? So um, let me answer that question again. So the idea here is everything is encapsulated. So at this point, you could take the data that you initially imported. Let me uh, go here. So if I imported these, let's be as clear as possible. Uh, let's delete all of that and I'll import project uh, object and I'll import dry sand pack. Now, this is an ORS object file. And once I have imported it, and now if I drag all of this into dry sand pack, there is a copy of all of this data in my project organizer, in that project root. At this point, I could delete my copy that I loaded off of disk. That is, uh, this file right here in downloads Dragonfly data, this I could delete or move to some offsite backup. I'm not using that anymore. I'm using a second copy. I'm using a copy that's encoded in my organizer. The organizer is not making symbolic links, which as someone has already pointed out, would be broken if you move the data. This is a copy of the data in ORS object format so that it is encapsulated with the project. So that's the way the organizer works. Now, uh, let's see, I've answered that question, and let's see, here's a question, uh, answered that question. Uh, there's a question, is it possible to crop a thickness mesh? Uh, no, meshes, I'm pretty sure meshes cannot be cropped. I don't think we even covered thickness meshes yet, but a mesh is not like an image channel that is a lattice uh, that can be cropped. It is a set of coordinate point data. I suppose you might at some point want to remove vertices and the associated triangles, but I don't think we have any tools for editing a mesh in that uh, in that way. Okay, um, I don't see any more questions in the questions and answers block. So thank you, oh wait, wait, maybe there's one more. Is there a way to open all the objects in the organizer at once as an ORS file does? Well, you could uh, select all of these and then uh, drag them over. And then that will load everything from the objects tab. Uh, if you wanted to do the session tab, you would double click. And of course, others like PDFs are things you wouldn't load in Dragonfly. So basically you just start on the objects tab and select everything and then drag it over. So I think that answers that question. All right, that's it. All right, we will resume tomorrow with another wonderful topic. Thank you all for your attention. Stay healthy, be good, and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody.